Am I the asshole for missing a few family events because I have a newborn? So my in-laws have let out months of built-up tension out on my husband, 34M, and I, 28F. They claim we have not been present enough in the family which confuses me because they have been involved in everything I've had for the baby since pregnancy, even having all seven of them at my house 24 hours after I delivered the baby so that they would feel included. My brother-in-law wedding that took place in another state on an island only accessible through jumper plane a month after I gave birth also on my birthday and also the weekend of my first my mother's day. They were upset that my husband did not go. I told my husband to go but he decided to stay with me and my newborn. Mother's Day. They were upset I did not attend lunch with them to celebrate my husband's mom. I, again, told my husband to go which he did and I went with my family and introduced the baby to my grandparents. We spent my first MD apart from each other but they are still upset that I did not go. My grandfather was recently diagnosed with tongue, mouth cancer and this was the Sunday before he started chemo per radian on the following day so I wanted him to be with the baby too. I'd like to add I saw her that following weekend to take her her gift. Probably the most controversial that may make us the awe? A bridal shower for the sill. This was happening at 10 a.m. when I had a three-week-old who slept in 10-minute increments all night. The bride told me not to worry about attending, she just wanted me to know I was invited. We also had plans late that evening, 9 p.m., to attend a dinner for my husband's best friend. My husband hadn't seen his friends in 11 months so even though I really did not want to go because I was tired and self-conscious about my body, we went. We left the baby with my in-laws that same night. Well during the argument my mill says, you didn't go to the bridal shower even though you're new to the family and have to prove yourself a little bit but you had no problem leaving the baby and going to the bar. This is where we ended the conversation, got in our car, and left. And we have no plans to let them watch the baby again since it'll be thrown in our faces later. Father's Day. We had plans to visit my grandfather because my husband hadn't seen him at all since he started treatment. We asked my in-laws what their plans were but since they were traveling that day nothing definitive was made until the morning of. We left my grandparents a little late and it's a long drive back home. We called them while they were out to lunch to see if we can still stop by but they were already seated and ordering so we said we'd bring dessert over afterward. Since they had just traveled they said they wanted to rest but they'd call when they were up. They never called. They said their feelings were so hurt that we didn't attend lunch. I understand. But my husband didn't want to spend FD apart from each other like we did for MD and my grandfather was not doing well so I needed my husband to be there for me. How dare you putting your newborn first. You almost sound like a great mother winking face. Not the asshole. You and your husband are both grown ass adults with your own family and needs to consider. I honestly don't understand how your in-laws get off thinking they have agency, veto rights and priority over how, when, where and with whom you spend your time. Live your best life. Not the asshole. They would make this introvert have a panic attack. This would make me spend less time with them. You're a mother. Why would you go spend Mother's Day with the in-laws? That's just selfish on them. Also, they need to understand you have family too. I'd pull back from the crazies and take care of yourself and your family. NTA. I'd like to add there were several events in between these that I listed that we did attend. I am back to working full-time as a nurse, my husband works MF95 and we are both in school for our master's degrees. The time we have for each other is slim much less for anyone else. Am I the asshole for not inviting my stepsister to my birthday trip and talking crap about her to our friends? Some context. My, 16F. Parents broke up when I was pretty young and my mom married my stepdad when I was 6. He has a daughter who is the same age as me. We don't really get along. We don't hate each other but we don't see each other as sisters or even friends. My mom and stepdad are financially stable but don't have a whole lot of disposable income. My dad isn't super rich either but he's single and I'm his only kid so he can afford to get me more nice stuff. I turned 16 last month and he took me to LA for 10 days. He let me invite 5 people and I took my 2 cousins on my dad's side and 3 friends. When my mom found out about the trip she was really mad. Apparently her and my stepdad were planning a trip to Disney this winter and we've never been so she wanted our first trip to be as a family. She tried to convince me to not go but it was during my dad's time so there's nothing she could do to stop me. After she realized she couldn't stop me she tried to convince me to take my stepsister so she wouldn't feel jealous. I talked to my dad and he said he wouldn't mind taking her if I really wanted to. 
We were driving and my dad's car can fit eight people but it gets really uncomfortable with three people in the back seat. I wouldn't have minded having her there but I didn't particularly want her there either, so I decided to not invite her. My mom and stepsister were pissed to say the least. My stepsister threw a tantrum on the night before I left but I didn't really care. I got back a few days ago. Yesterday she posted a story about spoiled BT chess going on fancy vacations while she had to work over the summer. She didn't mention me specifically but I knew she was talking about me. Some of our friends came over today and NY trip came up in our conversation. My stepsister basically said that I'm a spoiled brat who gets everything I want while she has to spend her whole summer working just to buy a decent car. My dad got me one. She also said that Disney is just for little kids. She's been acting like this since I got back and I'm pretty sick of it. I said she's just jealous and I told our friends about how she was acting like a little kid, crying and throwing a tantrum, because she wanted to go to a place that's for little kids. Some of our friends started laughing. She got really upset and went to her room and didn't come out until they left. She told my mom and she's really mad at me. She threatened to take away my phone but I told her that she can't because my dad paid for it and she started yelling at me and calling me an ungrateful brat and she said that O can go and live with my dad if I'm gonna be like this. I called him and told him to pick me up in the morning and she's really upset because she didn't actually mean it but she was just really mad because I embarrassed my stepsister in front of her friends. Edit. I'm at my dad's right now and my mom's been calling me non-stop. I might go back tomorrow. Not the asshole your mom forcing your stepsister on you is the root of this problem. Go live with your dad and enjoy the peace. Not the asshole. Step is lashing out at you because she's jealous that your dad provides things her dad can't. It's unreasonable for someone you don't get along with to expect to join your trip. It wouldn't have been fun for anyone. Your mom is a piece of work for suggesting you take step. Your mom is a piece of work for thinking you should take her, for threatening to take your phone and telling you to go to your dad. I hope you're staying with your dad now. Go to your dad's live happily. Not the asshole. I get that your mom has a duty to also care about your stepsister, but that's her duty and not yours. Your stepsister acted ridiculously and you called her out on it. Not the asshole your mom and stepsister need to get a grip. Am I the asshole for having my husband's father come get him when he's drunk and belligerent? My husband was working at the neighbor's house and ended up getting drunk with the neighbor. He came home an hour later than he said he would, completely plastered. We have a two-year-old daughter, who was very excited to see him. He very nearly dropped her in the kitchen sink, made an awful mess of dirty dishwasher in the kitchen and on our daughter. He then proceeded to demand our daughter get in her high chair to eat Cheerios. She wanted to eat them while cuddling with him and watching Paw Patrol. When our daughter didn't want to comply, he ate the Cheerios in front of her and laughed when she screamed and cried. Trying to be fair here, she had already eaten and the Cheerios were just a snack, but still. I kicked him out of our house, and called his dad to come get him so he wouldn't drive drunk. I love him very much and he's normally a fabulous parent to our daughter, but I didn't want her to see him like that, and, frankly, I don't have the emotional capacity to deal with his behavior tonight. I feel sort of badly now, so, am I the asshole for sticking to my guns and sending him to his parents' house to sleep it off? Edited to add and give a small update, 9.37 a.m. next day. 1. I had no reason to believe he was plastered at 7.30 in the evening. I didn't realize he was drunk until he stepped into the room I was in and I could smell the alcohol, whiskey. He doesn't drink like that often, one to two times per year maybe and no one in this house has any type of alcohol open or available before our daughter goes to bed. 2. I didn't immediately jump to calling my in-laws. I dislike imposing on them for anything. My own parents live literally five states away, so they weren't an option. I did call his best friend first, but he was out of town and couldn't help me. 3. For every sexist fucking prick who's asking me who pays the bills and stuff, we spilt them based on salary, and guess what? jackasses, I pay, significantly, more because I make, significantly, more. Take that shit out of here and reevaluate yourself and your worldview. 4. Small update. I read him the riot act this morning, let him know what he did, it was clear to me he didn't remember. He was properly contrite and ashamed of himself, and apologized profusely, and sincerely, to both me and to our daughter. Since this was literally the first time this has happened, I'm going to choose to believe this was a lapse, albeit serious lapse, in judgment. Re-evaluation will occur if this happens again. He did say that I was right to call his dad, 
he wasn't in a frame of mind to listen to me, and was extremely grateful I didn't tell his mother, who would have come down on him like a ton of bricks for his treatment of her only grandchild, drunk or not. Thanks to everyone who gave me extra perspective on this, I probably would not have been as vehement or harsh in my reading of the riot act this morning if I hadn't had the additional insight from you folks. Not the asshole. As a child of an alcoholic father, you need to nip that shit in the bud. If you don't, it only gets worse. Believe me. Not the asshole. Is this the first time he did this? If so, he will be embarrassed enough not do this again. I'm sure his father will give him hell. Not the asshole if he can't behave like a responsible adult around your child, then that was the best move. Does he get drunk and behave like that often? If so I'd reconsider letting him come back. If not and it was a seldom, one-off event then I'd tell him how he behaved while drunk so he knows that getting that drunk isn't a good plan in future. Not the asshole he sounds like he was being a danger to himself and others. Info. Does he have a habit of doing this or is this a one-off? Would I be the asshole if I hire a nanny? My, 33M, better half, 30F, and I had a disagreement over the need of a nanny. She is adamantly against it. I am begging for it. For some context, we have three completely amazing children. A 1-5 yo, 2 yo, and a 6-month-old. My better half is a stay-at-home mom and I work full-time in addition to recently establishing a business. I love being a dad and I love my children. I try to actively be involved in time spent together, cherished memories, and the daily dues that come with being a parent. I love teaching them, hanging out with them, and literally just watching them. I love my work. I have been in my industry over 10 years and I have climbed the corporate ladder further than I ever would have imagined. It's something I truly enjoy but that does not eliminate the stress that comes with it. I love my wife. How lucky am I that I found the most amazing and wonderful woman on the planet. Group all of life, love, pursuit of happiness, and the pursuit of the dollar into the equivalency of keeping just one nostril above water. There just aren't enough hours in the day. I really need some time to myself to decompress though. Even with all the love, I need time to just exist and do nothing at all. It doesn't sit right with me to take alone time when I know that my wife needs it just as bad if not more. She is at home with the kids all day, the little ones still completely depend on her and I, and she never gets time to herself. I proposed getting a nanny for about three days a week and she was all against it. She said it would take away a sense of pride and it's completely unnecessary. She felt if I needed alone time to just tell her and she's more than happy to accommodate that. She also said she doesn't need alone time and knows I'd be there for her when she does. I stated even though she feels it's unnecessary, I would never truly get the undisturbed time I seek. There's no way I can do anything on my own if I know she's alone with the kids and I am just fucking off. That burden on my mind would promote the opposite of what I seek. I have obligations at the house and with the kids and rather than just pile them on her, I would rather have hired help to fill in. I mentioned we can use different terminology or even just hire a maid. She's still completely against it and unwillingly to entertain it. We always seem to find a resolution to our differences but it's the fact of the catch-22 here. Me hiring a nanny forces her against her will. Her forbidding the help forces me out of what I feel is a need. I think I just want to initiate the process and just start interviews to see who is available or what services are out there. Whether it's a nanny or maid. She's against further consideration but I think that's a bit unreasonable. Pretty sure she's going to be super pissed. Would I be the asshole? I'll take it both ways. I just want to hear some outside perspectives on a complex situation. Thanks fam. F former nanny here not the asshole. Nannies take on different workloads with different families, and while some super busy and career-oriented families have nannies do the bulk of the parenting, other families have nannies come on part-time to assimilate into the household and childcare load. The latter was my situation. Dad worked out of the house and mom worked from home, and I was there to keep the children fed and maintained during the day. I was essentially an extension of the existing parenting plan, and my presence in no way took away from the parents' position in their children's lives. This is a deeper conversation you should have with your wife, but having a nanny doesn't make you guys lesser parents. Info. Did you share your reasoning with your wife or just say you need to hire a nanny out of nowhere? No. Why not have a schedule where every Tuesday you have alone time, every Thursday she does, or goes out with friends or whatever she wants to do. And you watch the kids on Thursday and she watches them on Tuesday. Info. Are you both the biological parents of all the children? 
You are the asshole she's a stay at home. What's the point of being one if you're hiring a nanny? The whole idea is to be at home with the kids. She doesn't want a nanny. That's your answer. I'm a stay at home mom too. I'd be offended and pissed if my husband did that. If you can't go out because she's home that's a you problem you need to get over.